Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Robin. And I am Gil, and we are so glad to welcome you today to Rockin' the Love. That's what we're here to do. And we're welcoming Wayne right there, our very own rock star. Good to see you, Wayne. And all of you out there, we see your numbers, even though we don't know who you are lurking behind that number. So say hello in the chat and let us know where who you are and where you're calling from and all that good stuff. Like us and you know what to do. You've been here enough times to know what to do. So today we are so, so, so excited to uh, have a guest on our show and... And we might tell you who it is, but right now we just want to remind you that this is May and it's our theme of the month is May B. And so we've been talking about being the last few weeks and we're going to continue that today. We're excited about that. This week's theme is be yourself. It's not too late. Woo. That's good to know. It is good to know. <laughs> So um, for those of you who are joining us that might not have been here over the last couple of weeks, we've just been talking about being and what that means, um, how, how, do, how, how do we be in our life as opposed to, you know, always doing and trying. And what does it really mean to be courageous, be fearless, be this, be that? And how do you, how do you incorporate that into who you are? So today we're going to go a little deeper, um, but before we do that, let's just check in on um, our week <laughs> and what you took away last week and what came up for you. And all of you, please let us know in the chat. We'd love to hear if anything came up from our discussion. Um, hit it. Well, last week we were talking about being powerful, being in our power, right? Mm. And um, what I was thinking about was that for me over this last week, I felt like I've had so much to do, so much to do. And in, in that I've gotten a little bit lost in the doing and the, the, I don't know, the struggle to stay focused, to stay in it, to, to keep going. And it's been hard to get back to the being. And, and I would I'd like to ask our viewers, how, how do you feel like that? Because yeah. what I find is that a lot of people are feeling like that. And, you know, there's actually some data somewhere about times speeding up, you know, it, but it really feels like every minute is full. Like I have to schedule my minutes to not be doing something. And usually they still get usurped by something that yeah, needs to happen. So, I mean, are you feeling like that out there? So, so tell, say, say more about your week, about well, just the being part. Just that the anchoring into just being me didn't feel like enough. It felt like, it, you know, there was so much I needed to do and, and organize that I couldn't just be who I am. And when I took, when I found the time when I could go, look, this is what I need to do for me. I need to be, I need, I need to be doing something else. I need to take a minute. Then I was able to actually focus and center and come back to being. But when I, when I stay out there in that, I get lost. I get, I get crazy, you know, and, um, and it gets hard and I get, do I, do I get snippy? Uh. <laughs> that's a very generous kind word <laughs> snippy wouldn't be exactly what i'd say yeah but you get totally wigged out i, I mean get very it's, anxious it's very anxious it's it's very dr jekyll mr hyde it's like it's when i want to reveal to the world that you're not that soft-spoken nice guy that everybody thinks you are it's like uh, I, yeah I, I am i know that's when i'm not being me Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. See, this is the joy in relationship is that all of that stuff that we think we can control or or we don't think makes a difference shows up. I mean, I can't hide it. When I'm in that space and I'm not taking care of myself, I can't hide it, especially at home. It doesn't work. Right. There's no hiding. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Well, and okay, but I will compliment you. I will say in terms of my week, um, because obviously my week is affected by your week. And, and so it is really an exercise in being for me because I have to breathe a lot and remember that that's not the truth of who you are and that you're stressed out. And I have to really go to that place that you just said, that that's not who you are, that I know that something else is happening. And so I, you know, trying to stay as centered and focused as I can. And yet, you know, wanting to yell at the top of my lungs, what about me? You know, what about me? I'm here too. If you're stressed, I'm stressed and we're stressed together but I don't <laughs> um, generally. But, but what I was going to say is one of the things that I'm, I'm you did really well this week was we went to an event and we had some friends that went with us in the car and um, we were driving um, home from Napa and we had a flat tire. <laughs> oh, and that's always fun. We had a flat tire. It was about 10 at night, yep. you know, and we're, on, on the, the freeway. on the freeway, and you know, I I don't freak out about much, and I didn't freak out about that. But we pull over, and I know who Gil is, so I know already. I can hear his brain going, da da da, da going to fix the tire, going to put new tire on. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you know, and I know my friends were like. What what's what are you gonna do? What's gonna happen? Because <laughs> they're single women, probably wondering what's gonna happen. I knew that I had the mechanic there, and I said to him, "Call Auto Club, please. Don't get out and change the tire." Now, normally, had we been alone, <laughs> this would not have gone down the way it did. I know that, but it didn't matter. I'm gonna give you the space, so. I, I, so he looked at me and he went, okay. I could tell it took everything in his body not to tell me <laughs> why he needed to just get out and fix the tire and it would be fast. And But he did. And he called Auto Club. And, you know, apparently Spirit was on his side because it said 60-minute wait, which I heard his head go, oh, hell no. <laughs> and But he didn't say that. He said, okay. And he sat there for a minute and he he tried to look at a couple other things. And then he said, I'm just going to go out and look. I was like, yeah, okay. Well, to, just a quick correction. I moved the car over as far as I could to the guardrail. You did. You moved, I moved the car. It over, yes, before I got out. And then I carefully <laughs> proceeded to change the tire. And he, by which time, Auto Club still hadn't arrived. So, you know, I just canceled <laughs> the call and off we went. And you didn't even bother to say, see, I canceled the call and, and no. I was faster. You didn't gloat about it. But but it was, you know, I was actually on the phone with somebody else and I was like, all right, just stay in prayer. He's getting out of the car and he's going to change the tire, you know, because it just was it scary. Was it's you. dark and there's a lot of, you know, I mean, a lot of stories. I just read a story about someone getting killed on the freeway when they were trying to get their child's favorite toy. And I was, you know. It wasn't that I didn't think he could do it. It was none of those things. But usually that's where his head would go. And I don't think your head went there. Well, you know, I think this is interesting because I think this goes to that whole idea of, of being yourself. And, and that is that there's that part of me that feels like I have to do those things. Mm -hmm. And that's not really myself. That's some other thing in me that feels that so for me to be able to be in the space of i can and i can also i can also allow for what else might happen and be very careful and methodical and all that stuff which is what i did you know i opened up the space for something else and i did that and i think i think that was a space where i was really anchoring into that being being myself because I didn't need to do it to show you that I could or that it would be faster or any of those things, which in the past might have been the case, you know? Well, and I think so. I think you're right. And I think because I think when you when you even didn't fight back, so to speak, and you called Auto Club and you sat there, I didn't feel like you were doing it entirely to placate me. No, I wasn't. I felt like you were like, all right. Let me, let me, this would make her feel more comfortable. Let me try this. 
until it said 60 minutes and you were like eh. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> sitting here on the freeway in a car disabled by the side for 60 minutes did not sound like the safest item so there you go yeah so i mean but so it was but that for us was a whole new being yep that was a whole new being right on right on so, so that, so I mean, there were a lot of good things that 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 happened during the week, and I think a lot of times where we took out to explore, being some successful, some not, but <laughs> but still, it was a different awareness. So I'm just curious if anybody else out there had any awarenesses like that, because I know we gave a lot of exercise. So let us know in the chat if you did. I want to say hi to uh, Bonnie Morgan Gonzalez who is out there in watching and coming to us from Mexico. I love our international people. Bienvenidos a todos de Mexico. And she is also uh, has a fabulous show on Mondays, Your Doula for Grief. So tune into that. It's a great show that really talks about any kind of grieving, just how how to and how to not get stuck in stuck in the grief and, and not feeling like you should be over something. And it doesn't matter if it's a person or a job or a dream, whatever it is. Well, so Bonnie comments that sometimes I feel like I'm thinking and taking life too seriously. And so to lighten up, I put on some music and just have fun in the moment. And what's really, um, <laughs> what's really funny about that is that Robin makes me dance. <laughs> I do. She turns on music and makes me dance. And I don't know, it was yesterday or the day before she made me dance, and I did not want to dance. Um, and I knew that. And and that was why I needed to so badly. And I I I I kind of did, but it's those little things that we allow ourselves to do to push us out. Yeah. You know, I think that's the thing. You know, it's not always easy, but it's. It's a lot. Um, and it's funny because, like, for instance, I love to, when I'm teaching a class or doing something, to start with dance. So I know the what it does. <laughs> I know the power of getting people out of their stuff and into being themselves. But don't make me do it. I don't want to do it. Okay. Well, there's times. Well, and let us be aware that many of us either he, listening right now or in the future, it's not that we don't know what we're talking about. It's just that sometimes we need to be reminded, maybe we need to be reminded that we're right, <laughs> that we do know and that we need to do what we know. So it is a, it is a. I think it's being confident and in knowing that Doing a uh, uh, being the way that we know we we can be is a good thing. <laughs> it's a trusting. good thing. Yeah, it's trusting. not. It's not a you know just because you know dancing in front of other people or something might be weird. That doesn't matter. Is it, that's what we need to do? That's what we need to do. That's who we are. You know. Um, well, you need to just move the energy. Move the energy. Shake it off, as Taylor Ooh. Swift would say. Anyway, I see that John Chastain has joined us. And, um, oh, yeah, John says, just watch little kids. They dance spontaneously. Yeah, they do. They dance. They dance all the time. It's so it's true. I mean, well, if, and if we if we could just watch little kids, we would once again learn how to live because that's what they do. They live via play. And that's what we need to do. And on that note, I know you're anxious to hear our guest. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. Stay here because we have Dr. Davina Katulski here and she is going to walk us through some of these things and offer us some insights that, you know, perhaps we've missed. I mean, I can't imagine that there are any, but we're going to see if she can pull that off. She and might even dance. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so so stay tuned and come back right here on New Thought Media Network.
Hi, welcome back to Rockin' the Love. He's Gil. She's Robin. And we're Rockin' the Love. That's right. So we are so excited to introduce our guest. Yes, today we have our friend and uh, colleague, Dr. Davina Kotolsky. And, okay, I got to have my glasses for this because I can't see well enough. There it is. So, for, hi, Davina. So Hi. formal formal introduction. I just want to give her a little bit, live, give you a little bit of background on who she is. She's a licensed clinical psychologist, a sought after speaker, award winning best selling author. Davina uh, facilitates workshops and webinars on resilience and self empowerment, and authentic self expression, past life regression, spiritual growth, and mysticism, and helps clients move through their fear, self doubt, transition creative blocks, grief, loss, and trauma to become resilient, empowered, and successful individuals. Woo. Now, if only I could do that with people and myself, I'd be so happy. But today, we're going to touch a little bit on her first self-help book, It's Never Too Late to Be Yourself, Follow Your Inner Compass and Take Back Your Life. And I wanted to share this bit with everyone, and that is that you started, Davina, as a psychologist in federal prisons. And mm -hmm. I just find that fascinating. Um, that you were working with female inmates and and offering them the teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh and Napoleon Hill and Tony Robbins, and just that you had such a passion for that, and that's kind of kind of where at least some of this has began to really come up in you. Yeah, definitely working in the prison system as a psychologist, and kind of what was there was we would do intake screenings and basically just kind of put people back together just enough to get them back into, you know, general population, so to speak. And it felt like they were really missing having resources that and understanding like what brought them to prison and how to uh, treat their trauma. And then also address the, the thinking errors and the beliefs that they had about themselves in the world that kept them stuck in, you know, in a, a prison of their mind, so to speak. And um, so I really became passionate about how do we help, teach folks in the prison system um, success skill, like how to be successful because they didn't believe that was even possible for them. Like, wait, this has been my life so far. H how can I possibly have any different kind of a life? And by helping them look at their thoughts, change their thinking, doing guided visualizations, getting a different sense of who they were, like helping them reconnect with themselves before they ended up in, you know, in addiction and, and crime and whatnot and help them find a new sense and purpose, um, they were able to really turn their lives around. Learning things like meditation to deal with trauma, to deal with triggers, um, instead of just reacting, and the reacting always got them in trouble. So if we can teach them how to meditate, if we can teach them how to think differently, love themselves, then their trajectory changes. And, and I apologize, I do have a cold today, so, um, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> no, no need to apologize. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, and what struck me as you were saying all that, Davina, was just that that how true, how, how what you said in your description of those incarcerated persons matches what I find so many of us are really in the same place, minus having gotten ourselves incarcerated. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, we do it within ourselves kind of thing, like you said, in the prison of our minds of what we believe we can and can't do and what's right and what's wrong and, you know, all those things. Definitely. And, and um, I got so passionate about it and the, you know, working with people that society or that even in psychology school, they would say, oh, this person can't be helped. They've got this kind of a diagnosis or whatever. Don't even bother. And, um, and I, what I saw is that that wasn't true, that some people really could be helped and you had to find those, you know, you, you had to really put some skin in the game yourself as a therapist to, um, you know, c care and help and believe to help people believe in themselves. And I got so excited about it. I, I actually wrote a novel about called uh, Behind Barbed Eyes, um, kind of showing that process and, and how the systems, the prison system is actually really set up to just warehouse people and not to rehabilitate them and the challenges as a psychologist uh, working in that system. And after about 13 years in there, I, I did leave because I was like, okay, um, I, there change is possible, but at the same time, um, it, it started to become an environment that was more detrimental to me. 
And quite honestly, if you Google the prison that I worked at, you'll see it's it's in the news again for a uh, warden, a minister, uh, all these staff members actually sexually assaulting the uh, the inmates. Mm. And that was a part of the story that I was writing too. Was that this is this is the kind of stuff that's going on in this system. And how do we help people when they're being traumatized and then they can't even trust the people that are there? So yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So yeah, the, the place I worked is back in the news. I haven't been there for over 12 years, uh, maybe a little bit longer now, but it's back in the news. And um, and one of the things that I'm trying to do to change the conversation even now is that I've been uh, working on a, a screenplay um, and uh, you know we're gonna hoping to produce a movie that addresses some of those dynamics um, because it, it's got to change the way the system is now. Um, it's just, it, it, it's, it's flawed. And so we need to find a way to help people before they end up in prison, you know, young girls and boys that have experienced trauma in their lives, um, be it child abuse or sexual trauma, or they grow up in homes where there's addiction and then, and then they just kind of fall into that path. And, um, you know, but, but yeah, our incarceration system, we've got to change it. it this, it's not a healing system. And um, I do think it's helpful to have people take large timeouts, but not the way that we're doing it now, you know, more like uh, a year of retreat. That's, you know, they're learning how to eat healthy, how to heal themselves, how to address their issues, not let's, you know, lock them up and throw away the key kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Bonnie's saying, thank you so much for shining a light on the prison system that's so broken and in need of our help. And John also said, thank you for your work in our prison communities. Thank you, Bonnie. And <laughs> well, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, what I heard you saying when you, what struck me was that, it, that unfortunately it sounds like those that are in the prison system forcibly and those who are in the prison system by choice are uh, both coming from from things of of unhealed and traumatic life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they're not able to really work that well with each other. Yeah, there's definitely you know um, exploitation going on, and yeah, it's just it's not a healing environment. It's crime and punishment, and um, you know, it's it's a it's a big picture thing because as a society we have to look at um, forgiveness and where do we where do we you know um, where do we put our resources and and how do we how do we invest in people that have broken the law uh, in a way that that you know and one approach is um, you're on a permanent timeout and we you never are welcome to be a productive citizen again. Another approach is how do we create people how do we help people so they can become productive citizens again. And then also, how do we know, you know, who's who and, and um, what can we do to, to do that? So it's, it's, it's much bigger than, uh, you know, all of us, but it's, it's definitely, you know, something to think about and something that, that hopefully we can um, begin to heal in our, our community, since the United States has one of the biggest populations of incarcerated people, and is more likely to incarcerate people of color. So there's, a lot going on there. There's a lot going on. Yes. Okay. Well, that that's been a really uplifting show. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, teasing, I'm teasing you. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's just that reality. You know, yeah. that reality is is tough to deal with. I think. Right. right. You know? I mean, one of the things you know, um, you, you know, I was at one point. I was a part. I've been a part of different um, new thought. Uh, prison ministries. I was uh, a part of, um, you know, with, with Central, we started writing letters to, you know, and, and doing um, pen pals with, with, and sending science of mind information into the prisons and empowering people. And I think it's also really important that, you know, we empower people who are incarcerated, not just like rush in to save them and play, you know, we call this in prison captain save a hoe, where it's like, I'm going to make you better. I'm going to heal you. And it's very narcissistic and egoic, but it's like, Hey, how can we provide the tools and resources uh, through, you know, our freedom ministries or prison ministries to give folks who are incarcerated the tools to heal themselves, to change their own thoughts, you know? So I think that's important. That's something that those that are in the new thought ministries can do is they can have a, a freedom ministry and they can, 
you know, make sure those those great books are getting in there, the tools are getting in there, um, so that people can heal themselves, heal, change their thinking, and connect with the oneness, connect with the the divine. And I, and I think along with that, finding ways to serve both families on the outside and people as they as they return. Absolutely. To society, you know, how are we supporting? How are we supporting those folks? Are we are we creating the spaces for them to? really be able to dive in and 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 work on some of that personal stuff and and are we giving them the space to 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 have the the ups and downs of the process you know and john is asking davina if you saw the 2020 uh, on german prison system Ooh. and how humane and successful it is at rehabilitation wow wonderful let's check that out yeah, and I think, I mean, I think our title of this show is Be Yourself, It's Not Too Late. And I think that's, a, mm. it's a good segue. And it's not too late. It's it's never too late, right? It doesn't matter if you're in prison or if you're in prison in your mind or if you, you know, your you're circum 12. <laughs> right. Your circumstances don't yeah. matter. And, and so, um, so yeah, uh, I, Oh, Do you want yeah. to jump in real quick with something? Sure. So, you know, I, I mentioned that I, I stopped working in the prison in, in 2008. And, um, you know, a couple of years later, some of the people that I had worked with that had, I had a second chances program. And, you know, again, Reverend Gill, you mentioned the um, helping them, introducing them to Napoleon Hill and Tony Robbins and Thich Nhat Hanh and all these different resources. Um, and Abraham Hicks and, you know, lot, lots of different things several of the people that were in that intensive program that I was doing recontacted me later. Um, it, one of them got a master's degree in psychology and became a therapist. Another one became a drug and alcohol counselor. Another one became, um, you know, worked uh, as a drug and al alcohol counselor and uh, at a treatment center and, and was, uh, you know, like getting involved in, in management and doing all kinds of amazing things. And, they never would have guessed that that would have been their path. That was not who they were. I won't give any more identifying information, but they absolutely turned their lives around and um, became productive citizens and were giving back in just phenomenal ways. Um, really incredible people. And, you know, I feel honored that I got to work with them and, um, and that they use the tools and, and are helping people you know, all over now that, you know, that they've just completely turned their lives around. And so I think that's, you know, that's an example of it's never too late. And, um, you know, so don't like assume that just because you're, you've been on a particular track in your life or you're hit, you've hit a bump or something that you can't, you know, pull yourself out with the grace of God and these tools and, and the supportive community, because all those things are, you know, possibilities are boundless. And I, I think sometimes, for me anyway, it's really important for the rest of us to know that about other people, because having somebody see you as who you are rather than as what you've done or who you've been changes all of that. And that's that's part of what you contributed in your program was, I see more of you than you see. And so I'm going to walk you through the process to help you find that. That's right. And um, and we all need those people in our lives. Right. And, and seeing and, the divinity in them, not having them see the divinity in us, which is when they're borrowing something, it, you know, it becomes about us. It's like, hey, it's not about me. It's about this is you. you. It's in you. Yep. 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 I agree. Absolutely. I agree, too. Okay, good. No, I do. I agree. I, I actually... And, you know, we can stay on this topic. We can keep this, we can keep this and we don't have to go to the other stuff we talked about. That's the fine. But there's so, there's so much to this. It's, it's so rich. I hate to leave it. And we can always have you back. We know where to find you. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was just going to add that I, I actually have a prisoner in, um, in, that I write to, I have, I have a prisoner. <laughs> There's a prisoner that I write to through a prison ministry. And um, 
we have always, he has always from the beginning, he's been able to see and, and claim like he wants to do, uh, he wanted, he wants to become a minister. He wanted to start science of mind teachings in the church. He wants to, I mean, like, Oh, in the prison. Sorry. He, 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 he sees that and he has that vision for himself and he, he's able to see where others don't, you know? Mm -hmm. So he knows like he, he represents that in prison for people and it's fascinating. It's, it's, and, and great and phenomenal. So, you know, it's like each one, teach one, each one, each one, reach one, each one, teach one. It's like, if one is empowered, they all get it. And yeah, as John, John is saying, Matthew 25, 36, I was masked and you clothed me, clothed me. me. I was sick and you looked at, after me. I was in prison and you visited me. Dr. Davina, you are embodying this Christian tenant by seeing the oneness and the child of God in each incarcerated person. I feel strongly we need to hold this truth as a country, as a society. These are people. Well, you pointed out also that society as a whole is wasting so much by not acknowledging that because the three examples you gave are people who who their their gifts and their talents would not have come to us had you not and your program and your work in that particular prison at that particular time had that not happened we would not have them their yeah. their contributions yeah. you know so it's not only that you did this work you multiplied it by at least three you know that kind of thing i mean that that that's the that's the thing well and so kind of talking about something which which i do talk about in my book it's never too late to be yourself is that um if you want to make a change you really need to have you know a, a high vibe tribe and um which is a group of people that are are holding your vision of yourself with you they're seeing the best in you as well they're encouraging you instead of trying to bring you down and that was something by having these groups it's like i kind of got in trouble because they're like well make sure you're not creating a gang in prison <laughs> and i'm like i'm trying to create a positive community not a gang um, <laughs> but it was like you know the, this ha having people go through this experience together and um, looking out for one another, believing in one another and creating that, that community. And so I think that's something very important in our lives now is that if we want to make changes, we need to surround ourselves with like-minded people, you know, that um, can help us make the change. It's like, you know, we're in a sacred circle together. Um, I'm a part of a conscious community gathering group, um, just having community uh, that, you know, if you're going to run a marathon, getting together with runners to, to support you in that. So whatever it is, you know, if we want to make changes in our lives, we have to bring in um, and have a supportive community that is going to advocate for our changes because our, maybe our people are closest to us or our regular friends, you know, that we've had since childhood or whatever, they may or may not encourage us to make those changes. They, they might want to keep us kind of, Oh, just keep being who you were before. Don't don't rock the boat. So anyhow, that's I think that's important is that as that being ourselves, we need to be surrounded and mirrored by people that can see who we truly are, or who we're becoming, and the, the divine within us. Absolutely. Yes, and we have a Facebook user from in Geneva huh? from CSL Geneva says yeah. who says that they agree. And are watching gratefully. We welcome you. So, um, and I think I think that's a great place to take a break and talk about that when we come back because it's so important. It's so important to to recognize that, and and that's part of the journey, as I know our doula for grief knows out there, that when you go to move to that higher vibration or to truly step into who you are or to recognize your you know, infinite potential, sometimes you've got to leave things behind, you know, that looked like your loving family of, you know, choice or whatever it is. Um, so I think it would be great to take a break and come back and talk about how you do that and, and all that good stuff. Sounds cool.
So join us here in a couple of minutes on Rockin' and Love and New Thought Media Network. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. I'm Robin. And I'm Gil, and this is Rockin' the Love. And we're so happy today to have Dr. Davina Kotolsky, our good friend, and uh, someone who has walked through us, through with us to practitioner training and has dedicated herself to learning about who she is. And through that has, I mean, not necessarily through that. Uh, anyway, she's also dedicated all that learning to others. Um, and I wanted to share with you a, a quote from Steve Morobli. It came, it, it came up as something important um, while we were talking. He says, I find the best way to love someone is not to change them, but instead to help them reveal the greatest version of themselves. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what you've been talking about. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, but being, being ourselves... Um, I think part of that exercise is to allow others to be themselves and to encourage them to be themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we can't, we can't be the, the judges, if you will, of others and expect others not to do the same with us, to put us into boxes. You know, we, if we're going to allow ourselves to come out and be the full ourselves, we have to allow that in others as well. Yeah. And I think the more that we, do allow ourselves to be ourselves the less judgmental we are we have more compassion and understanding for other people and, and their process yeah i think that's true but i think it takes it takes getting past like you know we're the fear of winning or the fear of being not being the best 
mm-hmm. or that you're going to lose something if someone else is, steps into their greatness. And I think that's ingrained in us, you know, a lot uh, in, in, in the American culture anyway, about, you know, win, must win, <laughs> must have the right. most toys. <clears throat> well, certainly, the, I mean, we can go on a whole political thing here, but um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, dar- social Darwinistic theories <laughs> and practices <laughs> that we're, we've all been, you know, um, the survival of the fittest and, you know, scarcity mentality and accumulate more. Um, yeah, but yeah. we know none of that's true. I mean, Trump became president, so clearly it's not always survival of the fittest. It's <laughs> survival of somebody. I'm sorry. I just. Yeah. <laughs> I no, mean, who is fit? Well, you know, so. In terms of fitness. Yeah. Okay. Different show. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry. Just bring I us digress. Back. Well, I'm just trying to think of like how to how to relate that back to. Um, well, what I like about uh, what I like about new thought is that um, it doesn't really matter what somebody else is doing. It's like what's going on in my head, and what am I creating, and um, like taking taking my eyes off the other person's paper and putting it back on me. Yeah. Um, you know what what am I creating with the divine? What are my thoughts? And um, I've found that you know, I mean, I definitely, Robin, what you're saying, like. I have definitely lived my life of like, okay, I'm going to race to the top of the ladder of success. And, you know, I want to be the best this and the most that, and um, that's striving. And, you know, that that's interesting and that works for a while. And then I find that it's a little bit exhausting. And what I prefer to do now or the, the way I live now is um, I try to really live in the flow of what, you know, what do I feel called to do? Um, what, uh, what's wanting to be created through me? So instead of like, I have to do this, 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 and this, it's like, where am I, you know, following the seasons, where am I energetically being called to create? So like, sometimes it's, it's the, there's a book that wants to come through. Sometimes it's a YouTube video. Sometimes it's, I just want to go, you know, garden in the backyard or something. It's like, much deeper listening to the flow instead of like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, one YouTube video every week. It's going to be on these topics. I'm going to da 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 da. I've got to get this many followers. I got to do this many things. I can't, I can't do that. I find that exhausting and depleting and that it's, 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 uh, it's forcing too much instead of it's like listening and being open and available. Right. And wouldn't you say that that is really the quintessential stepping into being on some yes. level? Yeah. You're just being, you're doing what's in front of you to do. And it doesn't have to be done a certain way. It doesn't, like you said, you don't have to get this many followers. You don't have to have this many people on the platform before they'll show your title. And what if it all? you're just going, this is what I need to do. This is what needs to get done this week. This is what needs to come out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the soul. The ego is like, well, yeah, I wanted to be on Oprah and Ellen and, you know, I mean, definitely, right? So the ego has all those, like, benchmarks of what is success, but the soul is just like, hmm, what brings me joy? Okay, I'm going to write this book. What brings me joy? I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, see my clients and just being being present. It's not that, I, you know, and I haven't given up. It's just that I'm not striving. I'm open and available and opportunity show up because of that. But it's not a judgment of like, oh, well, you know, you didn't do that. So that means something less. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we only have about 10 more minutes left and I, there's so much more to talk to you about. You're definitely going to have to come back. Okay. Um, but I, I know that I, they're asking about your books out there. John's t- saying that your books are on Amazon and Bonnie is asking, huh? which one of your books you'd recommend for a first time reader of your work and why. And I want to get to those questions. I want to let you all know, we'll get to them. Um, yes. And um, something you said, you know, what, so I, I'm wondering, I hear you saying that and I, and I totally get it. And I'm wondering, like, you know, Gil asked me this morning, uh, what, 
how, you know, how can, what can he do? How can he, because he's got a lot of scheduling things going on and a lot of anxiety around, you know, things in all different parts of the country (laughs) (laughs) and trying to hold different pieces together and still have his family like him at night. Mm -hmm. So what, like, what, how do you, how do you really get to that, that step where you can take the first step to letting it be, so to speak. Do you have a? Um, I think I think um, when I started to, I, I think when you learn to hold that space of um, self love, such that you're like, okay, you know, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do what I need to do for myself, and not because other people need me to do it. So that involves, you know, asking what what is mine to do. Um, not needing to please everyone, being able to set boundaries. Um, sometimes it's a lot of boundaries. Like, yes, I can do this. No, I can't. Sometimes we want to say yes to everything. And yes may not be in our best interest. Yeah, I'm I'm still on the first sentence of what you said. You yeah. know, I'm still on the first sentence of letting go to, you know, not do what's best for you instead of what's best for others. You know, also, and I, yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't have anything to prove anymore. Like, like I think when I was younger, it was, you know, it was like, or caught up in more of that. It's like, I felt like I still had to prove something, like prove I cared enough or prove I was enough or, you know, um, uh, if I don't do this, they're going to think I don't care or I don't love them or I don't, you know, I'm not invested. Um, and so it's like, oh my God, I got to do these things. And now it's like, no, I am enough. It is enough. And what needs to get done will happen when it, when it's supposed to. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I was just going to share that, that I had kind of a moment of that this week. Uh, I, I got in my email, some information about um, what another spiritual center is doing. I'm getting ready to go and, and, and become um, the lead minister at a spiritual center and I got this information with this whole layout of the programs and their theories and their, you know, what, what their intentions are and their vision and their goals. And I had a moment where I went, oh, my God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Total overwhelm. And then and then I was like, no, it's just good information. It's just interesting. It's just good to see what other people are doing. This is not defining where anyone else is going, mm-hmm. where where I'm going, where that community is going, where any other community may be going. This just offers a picture into how one community is doing it, right. you know, and 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 t- and able to step out of. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to keep up with that, you know. Is, there's such a pressure to do more, more, more. Like you know, within a spiritual community, within an activist community, within a you know, a life coaching community change self help is like, oh, you got to do more, 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 more. And um, I think it's really a disservice because I think, you know, um, doing more isn't, all, it's just not always the answer. Sometimes doing more makes you more scattered, it makes you less present. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm going to just hold up. The question was what book to read first? It's never too late to be yourself, follow your inner compass and take back your life. This is a book about getting back into your heart and living from your heart, not from your head. The more, 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 more programs, um, more readers, more videos, more this, uh, whatever it is, you know, more activism, more marches. That's not it. That's not your heart. That's your head. Your heart is going to be like, what would be the most significant? Oh, having space to sit down with your parishioners and, and have lunch. That's not a eight week class, you know, um, <laughs> you know, it's just having the, having the space to do that, um, you know, uh, it, whatever it is, but, but it's not going to come if you're in your head, you've got to come back to your heart and you've got to look at where am I not in my heart? And when you let your heart lead, you are in the flow of life and you're co-creating with God. When you're in your head, you're an ego. There's not a lot of space for spirit to, you know, and source to co-create with you. You're just, you know, unless it's, unless it's being led by the heart, but I've worked with a lot of coaches. I've worked with a lot of different people and 
this speaks to me. The more bleeding from here. I've worked with amazing coaches and, and, and watched them have the realization that less is more. And when they're trying to put too much stuff into a cup that's already full and can't integrate it, you know, but it's like they feel like they need to give you more, 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 and then realize, oh, wow, you know what? Spaciousness is better. Letting somebody integrate, having a, a pause and a breath. Yeah, beautiful. And Bonnie's asking, how do you move beyond not wanting to hurt a loved one's feelings by doing what's best for you? Oh, there's a wonderful quote by Bert Hellinger that I cannot remember what it is, but, but basically if you want to live your best life, you've got to be willing to make other people uncomfortable and um, they might, they might actually grow from you, you know, taking care of yourself. Like that's what you're modeling. If you're saying no or taking care of yourself, even if it hurts them, they're seeing that, you know, first of all, you, you might be freeing them to, do and pursue whatever it is that they need to do, but you're also modeling for them. Um, if you have. Sorry that the moral yeah. to the story is turn always your turn your devices off before yeah. a show. <laughs> yeah, devices. So, um, you know, you might be modeling to your kids what self care looks like, you, you know, um, but yeah, you are going to, you are going to disappoint some people, but you have to be comfortable with that. Because would you rather disappoint other people or would you rather come to the end of your life and have really disappointed yourself because you were busy people pleasing everyone else through your entire life and then you actually didn't go after what mattered and what you cared about. And um, we're meant to evolve, we're meant to change. And when you pursue what's in your heart, you allow that to happen instead of forcing yourself and others to be stagnant and not grow. Even if other people think that, hey, it's better if you don't change. It's better if we stay in this dynamic or stagnancy or whatever it is. If we stay snuggled up here in this dysfunction. Yeah. 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 Well, and it goes right back to where we started, which was with people who are incarcerated. How many people around them there, the people that are, you know, overseeing them, the the families they come from, how many people are expecting them to just stay the way they are? And that's not yeah. the best thing for them. No. You no. know, I mean, the best thing we could do is 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 say, hey, this isn't okay. And this this is how the, you know, make decisions that may be uncomfortable, but will ultimately support someone in finding their better self. That's right. That's you know, right. I mean, I think that's the other thing. We think that when we make a decision that affects someone else, that affects some relationship we're in, that because the relationship doesn't look the way it did that we have now broken it and it's broken rather than it has created the space for something new to come forth. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, your soul is calling to you and you have, you have, you know, like if you, if I had stayed in the, in the prison, I, there's all these other kind of soul contracts and opportunities and things I got to do that I never would have connected with if I had stayed. You know, and, and it would have been easy to stay. I, I share that, you know, and I think in the Man of Paradigm Shift, this is my, my other book. This is on um, creating the consciousness of abundance and freedom. This was how I left the prison um, and quit a uh, full time, wonderful six figure job. Wonderful in quotes, but like all the great benefits, six figure job, um, total job security. Two thirds of my uh, salary would be paid for the rest of my life. All I had to do was stay till I was 50. Well, at 38, I decided it was enough. And, um, and I, I quit my job and literally the, the day after giving the day before giving notice, no, the day I gave notice, the next day they announced the 2008 recession. And as I was giving notice, my boss told me, he said, are you stupid? Why would you do this? And I said, um, no, I'm not stupid. And, and it would be stupid for me to stay uh, I'm being called to something bigger and greater. Well, you don't even have another job. And I'm like, I know. And it was the first time in my life I'd quit something without something else lined up. I was always extremely careful. And so here we were going into a recession and he's like, you're going to change your mind now, right? And I said, no, I'm not. And um, I was literally jumping without a net. Um, my net was, was God. And it was to start a private practice really completely from scratch, completely from scratch. 
And um, what I learned is that, you know, uh, it, when you lean into spirit, spirit will provide for you. And the book, The Mana Paradigm Shift, is about manna from heaven. It's about when the, um, the Israelites left, they, they ran from Pharaoh, they, you know, were getting away from slavery, and they wandered into the desert without anything, without any plan, just following God, and that God provided for them every day what they needed. They, they didn't have any more security than that, but day by day, all of their needs were met. And so that's a book about leaning heavily into spirit, knowing spirit is your source, your supply and sufficiency in all things, and that spirit will find a way. And it may be uncomfortable and it may look different than you expected it, but you, when you lean into spirit and you trust and you follow your freedom, you know, um, and you stop being enslaved to limited thinking, you stop being in, enslaved to race consciousness that is about scarcity, um, that you know, the universe will provide for you. And so that's what that book is about. And so all the steps uh, and tips and ideas to psychologically deal with your mind and also spiritually keep leaning into to spirit so that you can be truly free. And so that was my path because I had to let go of the golden handcuffs um, yep. so that I could, I could be free. Well, thank you so much, Davina. Thank you for being with us today. Um, just really quickly before we go, because we got to go. Um, you uh your website people can go to your website and they can check out your book right we want everybody to be able to go and get a free chapter from your book yeah go to davinakatolsky.com and you'll be able to see a, a couple different places where you can download a free chapter of it's never too late to be yourself and uh, the man of paradigm shift you can either so download you can check them out for yourself and see what see what resonates with you and then head on to amazon or wherever else to purchase those books and and thank you so much for being here Thank you so much. And I hope you'll come back and everybody's saying much love and thank you to you and, and, and for opening their eyes. And you, you know, it's the, the point, the point is whether it's a big change or a little change, it's a change. And, and if we're growing, we're always going to be out of our comfort zone. Absolutely. So it's just making that first little degree step. And so we will talk more about it next week and we'll, Davina will be back at some point and we, it's been great to have you all here. And I just want to say that this is the kind of work we're all doing out in the world. And we're so grateful for your generous donations and your time and you telling people about the show and sharing it with people because it's really each one reach one, each one teach one. And we're all we're all a part of these changes together. So thank you all. You can go to newntmedia.org slash donate if you would love to put something into the kitty. We are grateful and thankful. And we thank our producer. You can see his show Friday nights, Fireside Chat. And we look forward to rocking the love with you next week. And rock it all week long, everybody. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you.